Over the past year, ESCOM has either taken its own action or has had successful prosecutions of persons implicated in fraud and corruption. The power utility has for some time battled to shake its image of poor governance and mismanagement. But uh, could convictions and sentences like the one handed down at the Palm Ridge Magistrates Court this week change all of that? Well, ESCOM spokesperson Sikunati Manjanja joins us now to answer that question. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for your time. Could this mean some sort of change as these heavy, hefty prison sentences for, for ESCOM crooks shows some strides being made by the power utility? Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, this is indeed uh, only one of the many cases that ESCOM has been busy with. Uh, the Forensics uh, and Audit Department of ESCOM has, uh, is seized on a daily basis with these kinds of investigations which, of course, it must hand over to the law enforcement agencies, that is, the police and the prosecution authorities, who have notched these successes. Uh, just, just by way of, a, of an example, in February this year, the Cape Town High Court sentenced uh, some thieves to 1,250 years in total for corruption. So th 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 this is only a, a part of the many cases that, that ESCOM is pursuing in an attempt, indeed, to weed out corruption and corrupt elements within its own workforce. That, uh, that's the job that is being spearheaded by the Audit and Forensic Department of ESCOM. What do you think this means now for the, the image of ESCOM? I mean, quite a, quite a great deal of information and uh, how processes work was exposed at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry where we all got uh, an in-depth understanding of the dealings within ESCOM and how corruption has, has sort of um, really progressed and, and made um, a big impact as to how the power utility functions. But in this particular example that we are talking about now of, of the two people that have been uh, convicted and sentenced to 20 years, the amounts are relatively modest uh, compared to, uh, to, to, to what you've just referred to now in state capture. That is where uh, we have not had uh, many successes in terms of prosecution because not many prosecutions have started uh, with, the, with the state capture work. And, and that's uh, due to the fact that ESCOM does not have control over prosecution of, of criminal matters. But that's where we now need the big boost, where uh, the, the huge sums that have been involved in state capture, where we should see a successful prosecutions. We, this, however, is the start, where it sends a very strong message to, to ESCOM employees internally. It does not matter the amount. Uh, the, the reality is these are crimes costing the people of South Africa lots of money and, op and economic opportunities. The big fish, of course, should be in the state capture uh, as, the, as the commission uh, releases its, its findings. And we, we, we still await the, the work of the law enforcement agencies to arrest uh, the, 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 the suspects and to prosecute. And indeed, ESCOM has done everything it could providing evidence not only to the Commission, but to the police and the, uh, and, and the prosecution services. As, as you make mention of the, the law enforcement's efforts and how ESCOM is perhaps assisting to the best of its ability, let's then talk about the role of ESCOM's Audit and Forensics Department, which is really uh, behind some of the gains that we've seen with uh, these arrests and corruption, um, you know, those, those committing corruption now being exposed and arrested and charged? It, it really uh, it takes a, an individual who has some knowledge or, or su has reasonable suspicions to, to, to blow the whistle and contact uh, the, the, the audit and forensics uh, department. And, and the work here in this particular example where Mr. Muraka and Mr. Chavalala uh, have now been convicted in the Palm Ridge uh, Commercial Crimes Court started all the way back in 2018. So the, the, the amount of work, the four years to, to arrive at a point where you, the, 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 the thieves have, are now serving sentences, uh, that's, that, that's diligent work by professionals inside uh, ESCOM working quietly uh, to, to uncover all the evidence and, 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 and indeed hand over to the 
to the law enforcement agencies. That's, that, that, that's, that, that's the amount of work. Unfortunately, uh, due to the nature of, of, of crime and, and the evidence being hidden, all of these cases take uh, so long to be brought uh, before the courts, and the, 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 the court processes themselves are not always uh, very, very quick to conclude. But the men and women, uh, starting with the whistleblowers inside the organization, or sometimes the uh, suppliers who become aware of these, uh, of these uh, crimes, uh, it is what has led us here, not only in this particular case. We have had quite a few other convictions, as I, as I have mentioned earlier, and, and these start uh, again with the patriotic people noticing uh, uh, crime and wrongdoing and, and, and uh, being generous with the evidence and, and uh, reporting this to, to the audit and forensic department. With this 35 million rand bust, I mean, it speaks a lot to the paperwork, the administrative side of, of the power utilities workings because fictitious invoices and payment services were involved in moving this money. What does this now speak to when it comes to the measures that have been taken to strengthen the administrative side of, of matters at ESCOM? Over the past three to four years, uh, ESCOM has really been uh, doing a lot of work to, to actually control expenditure, and that uh, involves a lot of uh, red tape, a lot of paperwork, and it involves obviously uh, more than just one person, uh, which in that particular instance resulted in, in, in this financial controller, uh, Bernard Muraga, actually uh, creating invoices and then paying out himself. No longer can, can that be the case. Before any invoice uh, has to be paid, at least three different people in three different departments have to sign off and, and approve that uh, the, the, the payment, uh, having verified whether indeed any work has taken place. And in this particular example, there was actually no services rendered to ESCOM. Mm -hmm. So uh, this has the effect, of course, of slowing down decision-making, slowing down processes and, and, and sometimes payments because each and every one of those people who will have to uh, sign and approve a, a payment are actually uh, implicating themselves or, or, or staking their own, uh, their, their own livelihoods uh, in line should they uh, be in a hurry and, and approve payments that should never have happened in the, in the first place. So you, this is the price you have to pay in order to clamp down uh, on corruption, particularly in an institution and country where this has been taking, uh, uh, going on uh, almost uh, with impunity for, 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 for more than a decade, where you have not seen major prosecutions. We still have not seen those. And, and as I said, we are looking forward to the big fish being caught mm -hmm. uh, following the state capture uh, report. And I suppose very quickly before we wrap up, uh, the taxpayers will recover some of the stolen funds through this judgment. I suppose this is uh, another benefit of these uh, people being nabbed. This, this is the sweetest part about, about this judgment. It's not just people being uh, sent to jail to again live on the, taxpayer, uh, on the taxpayer's money. But actually, in this instance, the, the, the court uh, has frozen and, and made an order that their properties should be sold and the money paid directly back to ESCOM, uh, which of course goes a long way to, uh, to, uh, to, to actually compensating the, ta the taxpayer. It may not be the full 35 million rands because a lot of the money uh, gets, gets used or abused in such fr frivolous things as luxuries and holiday travels, which you cannot sell uh, in order to recoup the money. But there are uh, things like vehicles, uh, other luxury items. There are uh, properties that uh, fixed properties that that were were acquired using these stolen funds, and all of those will be sold and the money paid back to ESCOM.